Have you ever wondered what happened to the wolverines in Colorado? These fierce and elusive creatures, one of the largest members of the mustelid family, have been largely absent from our state since 1919, except for a lone wanderer who traversed over 585 miles from Wyoming to the mountains outside Breckenridge, Colorado between 2009 and 2012. This wolverine, known for its solitary nature and elusive habits, was a symbol of wilderness and resilience. Known only as M56, with the M standing for male. Its presence in Breckenridge sparked conversations about the importance of preserving natural habitats and protecting endangered species. For many, it was a reminder of the wildness that still exists in the midst of human development. Reports of the Wolverine sighting circulated through the town like wildfire, with eyewitnesses sharing their awe-inspiring experiences. Some claimed to have seen the creature darting across mountain trails, while others spotted its distinctive tracks in the snow. Each account added to the mystique surrounding the last wolverine seen in Breckenridge. The sighting of a wolverine in Breckenridge, Colorado, marked a remarkable journey for a lone male, traversing vast distances from Wyoming to central Colorado, and eventually to North Dakota. Driven by an insatiable urge to roam, it continued its trek northward crossing state lines and braving harsh winter conditions. This Wolverine's odyssey captured the imagination of wildlife enthusiasts and conservationists, offering a glimpse into the extraordinary resilience and wanderlust of these elusive creatures. As it made its way into North Dakota, the Wolverine's fate took a tragic turn. In a cruel twist of fate, the very wilderness it had traversed with such determination became the setting for its untimely demise. Shot by an unknown assailant, the last wolverine seen in Breckenridge met a grim end, its remarkable journey cut short by human intervention. North Dakota officials say the wolverine, identified as M56, was harassing livestock when a rancher shot him. A North Dakota state law allows residents to kill fur bearers only in protection of livestock, and officials determined the killing of M56 was justified. The news of the Wolverine's death sent shockwaves through the conservation community, sparking outrage and calls for greater protection of these endangered predators. It served as a poignant reminder of the threats facing wildlife in an increasingly fragmented and hostile world. Wolverines are known for their small populations, expansive home ranges, and a certain elusiveness that has found its way into human myths and storytelling. They share the Colorado terrain with other mammals like badgers, marmots, and bears, often leading to mistaken identities due to their striking similarities when viewed from afar. This has led many to believe that wolverines may still be roaming the Colorado wild. Yet, the truth remains that these magnificent creatures have become a rarity. As the mystery of the Colorado Wolverines continues, a significant step has been proposed to solve it. A bipartisan group of Colorado lawmakers has taken a bold step to bring back the Wolverines. The proposal is a testament to their commitment to rewilding and biodiversity, to breathe life back into the Colorado wilderness, starting with one of the country's rarest carnivores. Let's dive into the details of this groundbreaking legislation. The lawmakers have laid out a comprehensive plan that speaks volumes about their understanding of wolverines' needs. The bill proposes to reintroduce wolverines into their natural habitat, the deep snow and high mountains of Colorado where they once roamed freely. The rationale behind this proposal is the suitability of Colorado's environment for these carnivores. Wolverines thrive in cold, high-altitude landscapes with deep snow, which is vital for their reproduction. The female wolverines make their dens in the snow, where they give birth and raise their young. Colorado, with its snow-capped mountains and high-altitude terrain, is a perfect fit for these snow-loving creatures. The lawmakers have also drawn parallels with the successful reintroduction of wolves to Colorado, which has proven to be a game-changer for the state's ecosystem. Wolves, being apex predators, have played a crucial role in maintaining the balance of the food chain, leading to an overall healthier ecosystem. 
The lawmakers believe that wolverines too can contribute to this ecological balance given their role as scavengers and occasional predators. This legislative leap isn't just about bringing back a species that has been missing for over a century, it's about restoring the natural order, about giving back to the land what was once taken from it. It's about recognizing the intrinsic value of every creature in the ecosystem, no matter how elusive or misunderstood. But it's important to remember that every major change comes with its share of challenges and opposition. And this proposal is no exception. However, not everyone is thrilled about this proposed legislation. The next scene will delve into the controversy surrounding this bill, revealing the different perspectives within the community. As with any major decision, the proposed reintroduction of wolverines has stirred up controversy. It's no secret that the idea of bringing back these elusive carnivores has divided opinions across Colorado. On one side, we have the lawmakers and wildlife conservationists who see the reintroduction as a necessary step to restore the state's ecological balance and biodiversity. They argue that wolverines being one of the largest members of the mustelid family and known for their small populations and big home ranges would bring a certain dynamism to the state's wilderness. On the flip side, however, are sectors of the community who are not so thrilled about the potential return of the wolverines. Ranchers and farmers in particular have voiced concerns about the potential threat to livestock. Wolverines, after all, are carnivores, and the fear is that they could prey on farm animals impacting livelihoods. Then there are those who worry about the natural balance of the ecosystem. They point out that wolverines have been absent from Colorado for over a century, and reintroducing them now could disrupt the current wildlife dynamic. Would the presence of wolverines, for instance, cause competition for food or habitat among other wildlife species? And let's not forget the concerns of outdoor enthusiasts. Wolverines are known for their elusiveness, but they are also known for their ferocity. The prospect of encountering one while hiking or camping has some folks feeling uneasy. But then again, there are those who argue that these concerns are based on myths and misconceptions. Wolverines, they say, are not the livestock-hunting, people-attacking beasts they're often made out to be. Rather, they're solitary creatures who prefer to steer clear of humans and other animals. As we can see, the controversy surrounding the reintroduction of wolverines in Colorado is multifaceted with a range of valid concerns and perspectives. It's a complex issue, one that requires careful consideration and thoughtful dialogue. While the debate rages on, let's consider the potential impact of this reintroduction. What would Colorado look like with a thriving population of wolverines? Imagine stepping into the wilds of Colorado, knowing that these fierce and elusive creatures are out there playing their part in the grand tapestry of life. The reintroduction of wolverines would not only add a fresh chapter to the state's wildlife history, but also provide a much needed boost to biodiversity. Wolverines as one of the largest members of the mustelid family could help keep the population of smaller prey animals in check, contributing to a balanced ecosystem. Yet this isn't just about ecological balance. Wolverines, with their small populations and large home ranges, have a certain mystique that lends itself to human myths and storytelling. Their presence could symbolize the wild and untamed spirit of Colorado's wilderness, breathing new life into local folklore and possibly even inspiring a renewed interest in wildlife conservation. But as with any significant change, the reintroduction of wolverines comes with potential risks. Some folks worry about the impact on livestock, while others express concerns about possible clashes between humans and wolverines. It's essential to remember that these are wild animals, not cuddly cartoon characters, and their reintroduction would need to be managed with care and respect for their natural behaviors. The reintroduction of wolverines could also lead to unexpected consequences for the ecosystem. Changes in predator-prey dynamics, competition with other carnivores, and influences on plant life are all potential outcomes that need to be considered. It's a complex issue requiring a delicate balance between ecological needs, human interests, and the welfare of the wolverines themselves. So as we weigh the potential impacts, both positive and negative, we find ourselves at a crucial crossroads. The reintroduction of wolverines to Colorado presents an exciting opportunity to restore a piece of the state's wildlife legacy, but it's not a decision to be made lightly. As we await the decision on this groundbreaking legislation, one thing is clear, the future of Colorado's wildlife hangs in the balance.